Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Beach Fishing Antics. Um, this time you see me a long way away from a beach, I'm actually in my kitchen. Uh, I thought I'd um, show you the way I like to cook whiting fillets. Um, whiting's a, a fish that, particularly this time of year in the winter, um, you can catch lots and lots of. They can become a bit of a plague, but actually they make brilliant eating. Um, they're a really nice fish. Actually, I, I understand the Queen's favourite fish. Um, so waste not, want not. Um, you know, if you're not catching anything else, I'm quite happy to bring a load of whiting home and have a bit of a, a whiting feast. Uh, and my preferred method of cooking them is in tempura batter, uh, deep fried. So nice fish and chips is what we're going to have today. Um, <clears throat> so I think the first thing I'm going to do is stick the oven chips in the oven, which has already been preheated. I'm going to whack those in there and put the timer on for the time that it said on the back. Simple as that. Right, we've got some um, frozen peas in that pod there, uh, in that pot. Um, so next thing we're going to do is make up some tempura batter. So we need a bowl, we need some scales. Okay, are the scales going to work? So zero that off. Splendid, okay. Uh, so, first thing we need is corn flour. Uh, what you normally use for thickening your sauces and gravies and stuff like that. Um, so we actually need, 80 grams will be enough for me, for the amount of fillets that I've got. Essentially, the, the normal recipe is 100 grams of corn flour 150 grams of plain flour and 10 grams of baking powder um, but I know from previous experience that that's going to be way more than I actually need so essentially um, I'm going to do 80 grams of corn flour 120 grams of plain flour so that's going to take that up to 200, nice and simple. Again, this is going to be more than I actually need, but it's a little bit less wastage than the other way doing it. Right, and there we go, and that's the plain flour. And then for the baking powder, we just need then 8 grams of that. So, almost that. And there we go. And that's it. Nice and simple. So you can take the scales away. Because that's all the weighing stuff done. I'll stick those in the cupboard. Right, we're just going to roughly mix that together. The great thing about tempura batter is you don't have to worry about mixing things really carefully or whatever. The whole thing's fairly kind of rough and ready. Okay, and then <coughs> we need to add a good sprinkling of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and what secret ingredient what I like to add is some smoked paprika good dollop of that makes it all look very pink but I think adds a nice little extra bit of flavor to the batter so just to give that another mix up <coughs> simple as that. Let's just have a quick okay, we're going to wipe that mess up as soon as I clean the kitchen today. Come on, keep it tidy. Right. Okay, hand the wipe of the hands. Right, and then the next thing we need, we go to the fridge and we pull out some soda water. And this has been properly chilled down. I actually had it in the freezer earlier, but before it started freezing, then transferred it into the fridge. It needs to be nice and cold. So I'm just gonna have to turn on. I'd already kind of preheated 
the oil in my pan here to around about 160 degrees and just turned it off while I was kind of starting to mix those things together. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just add enough soda water and just mix this up with a fork and as I said the whole thing with this is it doesn't have to be incredibly smooth and fine the odd little lump and stuff really doesn't matter very much kind of rough and ready the important thing is not to add too much water right from the get-go because if you do that and then you've made the whole mixture too too loose um, it's very difficult to go back again so just a little bit at a time for is that it should just coat your finger there we go I don't know how well we can see that will bring that a little bit closer to the camera so that's just kind of nicely coating my finger so that's absolutely perfect bang it's as simple as that <clears throat> and there we go now all we need to do is we'll just take the lid off of there use this thermometer here let's just check the temperature of the oil now what's a good idea to do is, um, because I'm going to be cooking quite a few fillets, I can't obviously get them all in the pan at the same time. Right, that's now sitting at over 180 degrees, so that's going to have to go way down. But the temperature's going to drop as soon as I start putting fish in there. So we don't worry about too much about that. What we do need to do is just try and keep the, the temperature reasonably constant while we're cooking. <coughs> So if you're not cooking oven chips, um, just stick the oven on anyway because we're going to be cooking a few, just a few of these at a time then we need to keep them hot. Um, my oven's actually got, a, we've got a warming oven which I've already got a pan in um, that's got a grill at the bottom. Uh, so any oil is going to kind of drip through, it's not going to sit in its own oil. It's a good idea and we just literally grab our fillets, plop them into the batter let the excess drain off a bit and pop them straight into the oil I'd already filleted these after kind of catching them when we were down in Kent down at Dungeness um, I didn't actually get round to filming that but there's loads of things on YouTube you kind of like you know if you're unsure about how to fillet fish there are lots of places where you can find out how to do that. It's actually very straightforward. Three. Now I've actually got thirteen fillets here. So if I just find a small one, I should be able to get that one in there. And then I'll do another two batches of four. So that's five in first. First batch, put that in there, rinse the fingers. Do, 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 do. And have a quick wipe off. Okay, so they're now bubbling away nicely. Let's just make sure that they're not stuck together, which they're not. Absolutely beautiful. And they really take no time at all uh, to cook. Uh, which is why I've already got the chips in. And literally just a few minutes. Obviously if you're cooking much kind of thicker fillets or whatever is cooking cod then it's going to take a lot more lot longer for the for the heat to get through but because the whiting fillets are actually so thin the fish is so thin they really take no time at all to cook. As long as your oil is nice and hot, 
and so you don't want the temperature too low on your oil because if it is then that's just going to kind of almost steam the batter and it won't end up nice and crisp. Yeah, I'm sitting at around about 160 which is about what I want it at. That's perfect. Now we just occasionally kind of roll those over to make sure that they're cooking thoroughly. Okay, and I think they're almost done. So what I'm going to do is go to the warming oven. Take the pan up. She's got a roasting pan here that just happens to have a kind of um, a kind of grill thing. Uh, kind of mesh thing at the bottom which is absolutely ideal so that's already kind of warmed up in the warming oven and then I can literally just scoop these out so you see that batter's nice and golden Get as much of the oil off as we can It makes a really nice, light, crisp batter. It hasn't quite exploded in the way that it sometimes does. I think the soda water I'd actually used before, so I don't think it was quite as fizzy as maybe I'd normally have it uh, when it's fresh, but not to worry. The important thing is that what you don't want, obviously, on quite small fillets is just an overabundance of of the batter because you're not then going to taste the fish. Quite a skinny one that one. They weren't the um, they weren't the biggest whites in the world that I was catching, but at the end of the day, because you do tend to catch an abundance of them, that really doesn't matter that much. Oh, I think we're nearly there for those. So we will get the pan out while we're keeping the other ones warm. Nice and crisp. Last of these. That's in. Oh, something skinny up. Okay, and there we go. See, still plenty of um, batter left, even, even reducing the quantities. And that's done kind of easily. That's done 13 fillets. Let's just give the some white. Turn that off, get that plate out of the way. A bit of a wipe. Let's 
try and keep the kitchen kind of tidy as I'm going along. So there's a lot of fussing about afterwards when you, you've eaten and you really don't want to be kind of then having to clean up. And we'll have a look at the chips. And there we go, there's the alarm gone off. Better move around. Finishing off, we'll grab a couple of plates down to there, put some tartar sauce, and next most important thing, just climb oh, behind the camera. Here's a couple of wine glasses. So we can have a glass of wine. Where's the dinner? Oh, there we go, we've got a nice Sauvignon Blanc, perfect with fish. Probably just about there, so turn the gas off on those. Bung these in there. rather a lot for two people here. I thought my daughter was going to be home tonight. I didn't check her out if she's actually working this evening. And ending up being rather a massive feast for my wife and I, but you know, who's complaining? Right, okay. Oven chips out in the oven. And turn the warming oven off. Turn the oven off. We'll come to the top so we can turn that off. And there we go. Simple as that. So we'll get this hot pan out of the way, stick it on the back of the hob. <coughs> and all that remains is drain the peas. And there we go. So all we need to do now is just plate that up. Look at that absolutely beautiful whiting fillets in tempura batter. Let's just get that dry. Look at that. Mmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. guys who needs the chippy when you can catch your own and they come out as good as that okay, chips A couple of glasses of wine.
And there we go, guys. You can't beat that. See you soon. Cheers.